Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, last week I put up a video, or was it the week before? Doesn't matter. <laughs> and one of these chaos guys, you know, cultists, ordinary cultists, ended up the star of the show. Everybody wanted to know, how do you do your cultists? Now, I've gone ahead and I've sprayed this guy in a brown. This is Fur Brown from Army Painter. But you can use any old brown. Uh, Mordfang Brown works well for this as well. You can also swap it out if you want to use a gray spray instead. You'll see why as we get into this. What you're really looking for is a base coat spray that'll work as one of the colors of the model. So a brown or a gray works great and they're going to be easy to paint over. That's another consideration. Once you've got those two down though, you are ready to rock and roll. Okay, um, so like I said, I've used fur brown and then I'm just going to use a handful of paints. Okay, so if I quickly pop onto there, a red, a blue, a dark gray, okay? The actual colors don't really matter very much. Um, I will include these down in the description so that people can see what I have used. But for the most part, the, the real technique here is just bashing on color, okay? There is nothing fancy in these guys. And up close, they look a lot rougher than I think people might have seen <laughs> in that last video. But, you know, your results may vary. This this works pretty well if you want to get a bunch of these scumbags on the table as quick as you can. So first things first, let's start with some gray. It doesn't really matter what you start with. I'm just going to look at the model here. And we'll just pick a couple of areas. Maybe he's got a cowl or something like that. And we'll just start painting them in with these colors. Now, part of the trick here, if I'm perfectly honest, is to be painting with paint slightly thicker than you normally would, okay? If we go ahead and end up obscuring some of the detail on this bloke, it's not gonna matter terribly much. So I've just got one of my little, you know, quick and nasty, uh, you know, cheap brushes. And all I really want is to just throw color on. Okay, we're not mucking around. I want a solid color and that's it. Uh, I'm probably going to leave most of his jacket in this brown. I could do it. Maybe a blue. Hmm. What we'll do is a spin around. I'll do another coat over these trousers and then pick another color and just pick a random spot. When you've got these big units of, you know, ragged sort of random guys here, I've done this trousers gray on the next fella. I might do this cowl area in that color instead and so on. So you can sort of split up the color a little bit. I'm gonna go on, let's do some blue now. Now because I've already got one guy who's got a red shoulder pad and a blue sort of cow thing, I'm gonna do this guy's shoulder pad in blue. Doesn't matter if I go up over the, the trim that's going on there because I'm gonna paint that another color in a couple of seconds. But again, let's just quickly bat that in. And then let's pick out somewhere else that's going to be hard. So we'll do this little respirator style thing on his back. We'll do that in blue too. Now we'll grab some red. I like corn red for this uh, just because it's real deep and dingy and it takes a highlight really quickly. The other bonus too is that it covers over this fur brown very, very quickly. And it'll do the same over a gray base coat too. So let's just quickly do this cowl across the top here. Now with a little rack of flesh, let's do, he's got these arm wraps going on. Um, some of these look a little bit more leather than others, you know, like they're actually um, put together with something other than just raggedy old cloth, but it is entirely up to you if you want to paint them, you know, quote unquote, the right way. Um, I like to just break up the color and shift them around on the model. So if this isn't perfect, it doesn't matter too much. We'll also go in and we'll just quickly batter this cable on the back of his uh, respirator there and finish these in here too. So go ahead, grab yourself a dark brown. I'm going to use dryad bark, though uh, Rhinox hide would work perfectly well here too. And just paint in, you see real quick, all of these leather details. You can as well, and I like to do this, just a quick slash around his belt just to break up his midsection wherever you can see it. Uh, same two, let's do these little booty gator bits here. Tell you what, we might actually end up getting some black out too, if you can believe how many colors this is gonna take. 
Now you'll notice I've also done in the gas mask with the same brown. It's not going to matter too much if it looks a little samey on the table, if I'm honest. So I've got here my lid belcher. Let's do the metallics. And with this, if you end up with a little bit of orangey brown in the recesses, don't worry too much if that shows through, because that's going to... It's going to help lend us a bit of sort of a rusted, gross, dirty metal effect. So real quick, just down here, do his knife blade. And we'll just jam in. Then we'll get our Bugman's Glow and just start painting in hands, arms. We really don't have a lot of exposed skin. But take your time, do fill it in. I think it's actually supposed to be a, a glove that I've just painted, but we're not going to notice. So... <laughs> Let's go and fill in his skin. And remember, some of them are going to have these little bits of head showing in between the straps of their gas mask. Again, don't worry over much if these are not perfect. Then grab just a little retributor armor and do in your cult icons. There'll normally not be very many of these. I'm also going to do on this guy's shoulder pad. Let's do him in with a gold trim there. Once this has got a wash on it, it's gonna go all brassy and nasty. And I think that'll look quite cool. Now, finally, just grab a little black. Uh, it can be bad and black, but for coverage on these guys and the speed at which I wanna paint, I'm using my Vallejo black like usual. So let's just quickly fill in the outside of his boots. And you know what, we'll do the handle of his weapon here. So anywhere that you just want a little bit more contrast. Everything's had now about 10 minutes to dry. And you can see, like, if I look under some of these areas of detail, I've, I've missed parts, I haven't painted right in his armpit, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. <laughs> but these guys, we're really just looking at getting models on the table quick as we can. So with all of those base coats done, let's grab our good friend, your buddy and mine, Agrax Earthshade, and just go crazy. Uh, that might actually be a little much, but for dramatic, you know, dramatic tension, that was pretty good. Um, work it around, do like you normally would with Agrax Earthshade. Okay, it's important that you do get it into all your recesses. Now you will notice I'm using more of this than I normally would. Uh, you don't need to go utterly mad with it, but, you know, this is, this is supposed to be dark and grimy and awful and this Agrax Earthshade is going to hide a lot of sins. So once this is all over your model, I would leave this guy for about an hour. Okay, we really do want to make sure that he is completely dry before we continue and because uh, we've used so much shade, <laughs> that might take a while. So let's come back to this once he's dried. Now, even after almost an hour's drying time, there's still some little pockets of wet stuff in there. <laughs> uh, we're not too worried about that, though, because most of the points that we're going to highlight are, you know, already dry. So I've got some Wazdaka Red, and I'm just going to... I've got a sort of, what do you call it, medium layer brush equivalent. One of my little cheap brushes. And the reason why I'm using this is because it doesn't come to a perfect point. And as you'll see, I'm going around here. I actually want it to splay out a little bit, okay? I want rough lines, I want jagged edges. I don't want a perfect straight highlight because this will help just reinforce that sort of grungy, not very good <laughs> angle that we're going for. So you can be, you know, as, as sparing as you like with this, to be honest. Um, I'm really just using it to define the edges of this cape thing that we've decided he's wearing. And at the same time, let's go ahead, we'll paint the little eye socket thingy on his cult icon. Ta-da! Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. I've got Deathclaw Brown, and we'll do this, funnily enough, over the brown areas. Now this same premise, you want that brush to be, you know, a little ragged. It doesn't matter if you haven't got one of these, you know, little nasty cheap brushes or if you've only got brushes that actually hold their point, you know. <laughs> Don't worry if your brushes work, basically. Uh, all we're looking for is just to quickly get this on. And if it happens to be a little ragged and uneven, then that helps sort of break up the lines between 
some of the sameness of these models. Like you will see this guy repeated a few times in the average cultist unit. So to have them painted differently in each of these lines, quite different to one another, you know, that'll help them look a little bit more unique. There we go. Done with that. Now to highlight his skin, I've actually got some tanned flesh from Army Painter. Um, I could go back over with uh, Bugman's Glow, but I want just a little bit more, you know, warmth and colour to it. But without going as high as uh, Cadian Flesh Tone would give me. So just real quick, concentrating on like big muscles. You know, these guys tend to have some fairly well-defined uh, areas. Like up on a shoulder here, for example. You can do as much of this as you like. Now a little Stormhost Silver lets us highlight any of the metal areas we want to pick out. And you can do the edges of the gold in this as well. Um, I tend not to do very much of it to be honest, but if I've mucked up any of these areas while highlighting other colours, uh, this can be a good spot to get in and just fix it up with a little bit of silver. I'm actually going to fill in the eye sockets here too with the silver and we'll see why in a second but for the most part just little any little buttons belt buckles details like that if you want to pick those out now just to add a little bit more visual interest to the model you can do that at the same step now to do the lenses on the uh, gas masks i like to go for a blue it just contrasts really nicely with everything else we've used and I think it looks pretty cool. You might want to swap in for a red or something, that's up to you. But if you've given it that Stormhost Silver base coat, then all you need to do is bip, just touch it in off the tip of your brush. And in a couple of minutes that'll be dry, and that's all you need to do. Alright, I might put a little bit more in, but like I said, that is it. Okay, when that dries, even if it is quite dark, it will be enough color that it looks different to the rest of the metal. Nice and simple. Now grab yourself an old brush and some blood for the blood god and just start jamming this sort of splatches of color on his weapons. Okay, you don't have to do very much of this if you don't fancy it. And really this is a purely optional step, you know. Um, I can wipe that away if I don't like how much is collected on there and just attack the edges again with the brush. It's up to you. You can really pile this on, but it works better if you if you concentrate on just little areas. So it looks like, you know, some matted uh, clumps of something important have come off somebody. And there we have it with his base done, our cultist is complete. Now the real key to this is making sure that you just leave some areas alone. Once you've got that base color down from your spray, there are plenty of areas that you can just skip entirely. I mean, you don't have to paint equipment. You know, you could you could miss a whole bunch of stuff. Really, this is just about picking something which you can cover over really quickly. And, you know, the results are really easy. So, a lot of people wanted to see this one done, so hopefully that answers that. As always, guys, you can drop a comment in the old box below. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.